Ken C. Dives, who is the creator of the JavaScript testing course and someone that a lot of people rely on for really high quality knowledge on testing, recently tweeted this about how this single test saved his site from shipping a huge bug. And this test is something that most people would laugh at because the only thing the test does is expect true is equal to true. Essentially, it's always going to be true. But why exactly would this test that always returns true actually save Kent? And the entire idea behind this is something called implicit testing. And this test is actually so good for Kent that if you look at his current repository right now, it is the only test in the entire repository. Now, obviously he would love to have more tests than this, but having just this one single test gives him at least some assurances that things are working. And the entire idea behind that is something called implicit assertions or implicit test, which is actually an article from Kent C. Dodd's site, Epic Web. And I kind of want to go over exactly what this article is talking about, why implicit assertions or implicit tests are so useful and how a single test that looks like this can actually save you from shipping horrible code. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. Now I'm gonna link to this blog article in the description so you can go through and read the entire thing if you want, because I'm not gonna go through and read it to you. I'm just gonna use it as some examples to talk about the points of implicit testing. So the first thing we need to understand is how different tests work. So if we scroll down here, essentially this test right here, you can see it has one single expect a statement inside of it. We're expecting the sum of two and five to be equal to seven. So you may say that this test is testing or asserting one specific thing. If we go down to the next test, you can see here, this has two different expect statements. So you may be thinking that this test is expecting two different things to be true. It's asserting two things, it's testing two things and so on. And same thing, if we go down a little bit further, you can see that this has one expect statement. So you may think that it's testing or asserting one single thing is true, but that's not actually the case. All of these tests actually have way more than one assertion built into them, but most of those assertions are implicit. Now, when we write out expect whatever to be whatever, we're writing an explicit assertion. We're essentially saying we explicitly expect this particular thing to be true or false, whatever it is we're checking for. While an implicit assertion is something that is having to be true or being tested to be true behind the scenes, but not something we're explicitly testing for. Now, in the simple case of this sum function right here that we're testing, the implicit tests that are happening behind the scenes is first of all, we are expecting that this sum.js file actually exists. On top of that, we're expecting that this sum function is called sum and we can import it from this file. We're also expecting that this sum function is going to be taking in two different arguments, a number and another number, and we're expecting that it's going to return to us a number as the output. All of these different things we're not manually testing for. We're not testing to check to make sure that this sum function exists before we call it, and we're not testing to make sure that this number right here that's being returned is actually a number and not a string or something else. We're just expecting all those things to be true implicitly by the fact that we wrote this one single line of code and called this one single import statement right here. Again, same thing down here. We're expecting this file to exist. We're expecting this fetch username function to work. We're expecting it to be a promise because we're awaiting it. We're expecting it to take this parameter. All these different things are being implicitly tested for us. We don't need to manually test all of these different things because we don't really care about that. The point of this test is to make sure that this function returns the data we expect. And in order for that to work, all those other implicit things, such as the file existing, the function existing, the function taking a string, all of those just must be true by default. So we don't need to manually test for them. It's the exact same thing down here, but even more so because here we're actually rendering out a custom JSX component inside of React. And this is even more powerful because now in order for our code to work, to be able to get this text from our component, we now need to make sure that our entire component renders properly. So if at any point our component fails to render, it's essentially going to fail our test implicitly because by default, we're expecting this to work implicitly. We didn't explicitly check to make sure the component rendered. We're just implicitly saying this component should render. And if for some reason it doesn't, well then our test is going to fail for us. That's actually the entire idea behind this single test by Ken C. Dots. If we look at it in a little bit more high definition version here, you can see that the reason that this test is so powerful for him is because essentially what it's doing is it's rendering out the home page of his application and then just expecting true to be the result. So this explicit test right here does nothing for us. We always know that this is going to return true. But the nice thing is by rendering out this homepage, we have a bunch of implicit tests going on behind the scenes. 
Can we navigate to the home page? Does the home page render without any errors? All these different things are tested for us by just having this one line of code right here. Even though we're not explicitly testing, does the home page render, writing out this single line of code actually tests that for us because now we know that if this test successfully passes, at the very least, our home page rendered out without any errors showing up inside the console or any build errors happening. These implicit assertions are actually even more powerful than this where they can help you with actually testing things relatively easily. They also allow you to write much less in your test. If we scroll down here quite a ways to towards the end of this article, it talks about some of the things that this can help us with by removing redundant checks. Here, for example, we're expecting some data to equal some object, so there's no reason to test that the type of that data is an object before we do that other assertion for checking this equal, because by default, we're implicitly testing that this is going to be an object by the actual fact that this will fail if we pass it anything that isn't an object. If we go down even further, we can do this even more when we have things that we're rendering out to the screen, for example. When we're rendering out this component, we don't need to check to make sure that all these different elements are showing up on the page, because instead we can just say, hey, you know what, try to fire an event on that element. If the element doesn't exist or this component failed to render or anything else bad happened, this is going to throw an error right here for us. So all these code that you can see in red here, we don't actually need to write because we don't need to manually test for these things because they're implicitly tested for us by the fact that we wrote this one line of code. This is actually a problem that a lot of junior developers and even I fell into when I first started writing tests is you try to explicitly test every single thing. This step, this step, this step, this step, when in reality, a lot of things are implicitly tested for you behind the scenes so you can make your test simpler to write, easier to debug, and still equally as powerful as when you wrote out all this extra code. So because of the power that you can get from some of the really simple things you can write in your test, I would highly recommend any project that you do starting by writing a simple test that looks essentially just like this. That way you at least have the most bare bones safety in place to make sure that if you push up a change that completely breaks your application, you'll at least know about that right away. Obviously, adding more tests in the future is going to be great, but having just this one single smokescreen test right there is going to be really helpful for preventing you from pushing major breaking bugs to your application. Now, testing is one of the most complex features out there, so if you want to learn even more about how you can properly write tests using Jest, Cypress, whatever it is, I have tons of videos on testing. I'm going to link right over here. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.